notes in our genetics unit chapter three is going to be focusing on chromosomes and what chromosomes are all right so uh, first we need to talk about the difference in chromosomes in prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells prokaryotic cells have one chromosome one singular chromosome that chromosome is also not associated with any type of proteins we typically refer to that as being a naked dna typically found in the nucleoid region of the prokaryotic cell. Prokaryotes often frequently have something called a plasmid, and you can see some plasmids here in this uh, cartoon drawing of a bacterial cell. Plasmids are just small extra DNA molecules. They are not always replicated when the chromosome is replicated, um, such as in binary fission. Therefore, multiple copies may be present so that each bacterial cell gets some plasmids, but also they may or may not be passed on since they are not replicated at the same time. Plasmids can be absorbed by other species when a prokaryotic cell dies, so that genetic information can be transferred to another species. And because of that, we actually use them to transfer genes between species artificially. So when we get into some of our genetic engineering, um, we will be discussing the use of plasmids in more details. Eukaryotic cells are much more complicated in their structure. Uh, they are have the DNA. That DNA is then coiled and um, wrapped around proteins called histones. So by coiling the DNA around these histones, we can store a large amount of information inside of the nucleus. Remember that humans have 46 chromosomes that we need to get stored inside of each and every nucleus in our body. Um, this is a great uh, website from Learn Genetics. Uh, it's very similar to the one I showed you in the last set of notes. What is a chromosome? Each cell in our body contains a lot of DNA. In fact, so as you can see, it takes you through with some audio and some visual with that. I do have one video. Um, it is a YouTube video, and it's just going to show us how DNA is packaged. It's, it's rather short, so take a look at that real quick. In this animation, we'll see the remarkable way our DNA is tightly packed up to fit into the nucleus of every cell. The process starts with assembly of a nucleosome, which is formed when eight separate histone protein subunits attach to the DNA molecule. The combined tight loop of DNA and protein is the nucleosome. Multiple nucleosomes are coiled together, and these then stack on top of each other. The end result is a fiber of packed nucleosomes known as chromatin. This fiber, which at this point is condensed to a thickness of 30 nanometers, is then looped and further packaged using other proteins which are not shown here. This remarkable multiple folding allows six feet of DNA to fit into the nucleus of each cell in our body, an object so small that 10,000 nuclei could fit on the tip of a needle. The end result is that the DNA is tightly packed into the familiar structures we can see through a microscope, chromosomes. It is important to realize that chromosomes are not always present. They form only when cells are dividing. At other times, as we can see here at the end of cell division, our DNA becomes less highly organized. So a great little video showing how those histones and the DNA is wrapped around those histones to form a nucleosome, like she said in the video. All right, so sex determination. Um, here we have chromosomes, all of the 46 chromosomes from a male and 46 chromosomes from a female. Here you have the distinguishing features of a Y chromosome and an X chromosome. As you can see here, the X chromosome is much larger. The centromere is also located fairly close to the middle of the chromosome. The Y chromosome has a centromere located near the top and is much smaller in size. We remember from many, many years of life science and biology, 
to have a male species, you have one X and one Y, and to have a female species, you do need two of the X chromosomes. So because of this, the females can only pass an X chromosome to a child, so therefore sex determination at fertilization is 100% um, controlled by the sperm and whether the sperm is carrying an X or a Y. Last thing we're going to talk about today is a karyogram or karyotype. This shows the chromosomes of an organism in their homologous pairs um, of decreasing length. The cells in metaphase give the clearest view, although you can take them in any phase. And what they do is um, they stain the cells and then kind of rupture the cells. And once they find a cell in metaphase where they can see the individual um, chromosomes, then they'll take a micrograph image of those chromosomes and then digitally arrange them according to size and structure, the structure being both the centromere position and the banding pattern. Interesting side note that this used to be done by hand before we had digital capabilities. Um, they actually used to take the micrograph and cut them and paste them very similarly to what we'll be doing in lab. So here is um, an image of what the cells would look like, the chromosomes, excuse me, would look like in um, metaphase after the micrograph was taken and then digitally arrange them into their homologous pairs. Because they are in the pairs, this is a diploid karyotype. Um, it is probably some type of somatic cell. Uh, so that is it for today's notes.